So we're just about to get underway in this European middleweight title fight. It could be set for a full 12 rounds here. Jamar Shashvili looks fairly solid. Never been stopped before. He's already fought for this European title in his last fight in Switzerland. Drew that one against Yves Studer. That's Matt Macklin aiming to wrestle back his European title, vacated by Darren Barker. Macklin certainly coming at the gate sharp. He's got some nice crisp punching. Starting off this first round. More timid Shalva. Nice throw on the left hand to the ear of Macklin. And Macklin some, throwing some good, showing some good movement, turning his opponent, throwing some good jabs. Nice uppercut followed by a left hook to the body. Mr. Jamada Shashvili has at least one fan in the audience and he's sat right behind me. I can hear that. Lots of Georgian. How's your Georgian cash? Yeah, well, uh, I'm still working on it. I wouldn't dare try and repeat what he's saying. It sounds like a curse word in my language. Sounds as if he means business. Matthew Macklin means business tonight. You may not have spoken Georgian before tonight, but I think you may be fluent at the end of the night, Ian. Well, if we can maybe turn this guy down at all, Mark. Matthew Macklin on the verge of a world title opportunity. He can't afford to slip up at all. He's had a, a checkered career, really, Macklin. He's moved around a bit. Chopped and changed promoters. He was with Ricky Hatton for a while. He started out, of course, with Frank Warren after winning a, an ABA title as a teenager. He's worked with Brian Peters in Ireland as well, boxed a couple of times in Dublin, trading on his Irish heritage. And a real classic against Jamie Moore, British uh, light middleweight title. He was badly weight drained that night and lost a, a real thriller. One of those fights where even though you lost, you lose, you can uh, learn a lot from it. Macklin moved to middleweight. Undefeated, actually, at 160 pounds. Ooh, Macklin eating a left hand right there against the ropes. That was unexpected, and he comes right back with a cu couple of lefts of his own. <laughs> Fairly uh, paced first round. Yeah, it looks like it could be another evenly matched fight here. Georgian hasn't got a bad record. We're looking at pictures here in Matthew Macklin's corner. Joe Gallagher, the man in charge. Of course, Freddie Roach, who Macklin has spent a lot of time with, is uh, in the Philippines. Working hard in Macklin's corner. Uh, interestingly, Frank Warren's just taken a, a call and disappeared from ringside. I wonder if that's about Enzo Macanarelli. He had a worried look on his face. Well, we saw Mac going out of the ring last, trying to avoid the oxygen, but best thoughts and prayers go to, well, out to him and his family that he's going to do okay in his recovery. It was a, a sobering knockdown. Has maybe taken the Bit of an edge off, off this one. Matt Macklin challenging for the European middleweight title. Maybe uh, Jamar Ashavili has a bit of Irish heritage. He's sponsored by O'Neill's Sports Gear. On his shorts there. Maybe they're a borrowed pair. That's either Irish heritage or Irish patronage. As if he can fight like an Irishman, though. Certainly looks handy. Not a bad record. 27 wins, two losses, one draw, 19 stoppages. The vast majority of his fight 
fights have been in uh, Georgia. He's been to these shores before, though, where he fought Martin Murray back in February. He lost over six on points, so Macklin will be confident that they have too much for him. Yeah, he certainly seems a, a sturdy opponent. Macklin certainly throwing some punches from all different angles, and Chava just keeps moving forward. Sometimes as a commentator, as you know, Cash, you wonder if you're going to be in for a quick fight. Maybe a short night's work as it gets towards witching hour. And I just took a, lot, a look at the Georgian as he came into the ring. And he just looks like the kind of guy that's you're not going to shift. Yeah, <laughs> I'd agree. He um, definitely shows signs of a sturdy and um, well-schooled defensive boxer. He's got a good job, uh, does a good job with his elbows, protecting his rib cage. And you know, it's going to be an interesting test to see if Macklin could figure out a way to penetrate. Body shots here from Macklin. He spent a lot of time when he was a young boxer around Ricky Hatton. He was part of the Billy Graham stable in Manchester. He would have sparred many rounds with Hatton back in the day. He came through the ranks. There's something to think about here, Macklin. Having things all his own way. It'd be hard for him. Having to refocus after the Barker fight fell through. Yeah, I know that one was uh, highly anticipated amongst many fight fans. Macklin not too happy that Barker pulled out. Seems to be a, a lot of that lately. Injuries in the sport being pulled out, canceling a lot of people's travel plans a recently. Yeah, a curse on the uh, McKennessy stable, I think, because Carl Froch, Barker's uh, promotional stable mate, Pulled out of his fight with Arthur Abraham as well. No reason to believe the uh, injuries aren't genuine, though. Parker seemed genuinely upset. He missed out on his opportunity to fight Macklin. It really would have been a, an occasion, though, had Barker turned up tonight. I think he would have uh, a decent crowd in here, but I think it would have been absolutely rammed to the rafters. Seems like a little sting has come out of the energy of the crowd as well this evening. What was uh, packed to the gills earlier is now um, starting to dwindle a little. However, we still got some great action here and even another one after. It's been a, a long Four night, I suppose, and we're coming up to what, quarter, quarter past 11 now. A few people thinking about how they're going to get home. Well, for me, that thought is long gone. Threw that one out the window in the third fight. Certainly got value for money this evening. One more title fight to come as well. Frankie Gavin. At the moment, we're watching Matt Macklin. Another Brummy. Some Irish heritage as well, hence the green shorts. Some good work up against the ropes there. It looked like a sense of urgency for Shalver. He got off those ropes very quickly. He felt them on his back. He didn't like it. He turned. So I see you've taken the easy way out, Cass, and gone for Shalver. Yeah, I mean, I saw right away when you tried to pronounce his last name, and I, uh, I gave you about um, one round before <laughs> you'd switch. It's almost an air of after the Lord Mayor's show about this fight. Macklin throwing reaching jabs to the body. Not that effective unless he plans on using them as a decoy, a diversion to set up a big right hand over the top. There's some nice uppercuts, a right hand followed by a left. A lunging left by Shalva to no avail. Bit of blood from Shalva's nose now. Yeah, I reckon those might have come from those previous uppercuts thrown by Macklin. They seem to land on their target. So he's in control at the moment, Matt Macklin. 
making his opponent miss there. Now he's got him trapped in the corner. The crowd get excited. Shah was well in control there. Another flat-footed fighter in Shalvi is just standing there. They're, the boxers tonight, uh, a couple of them have seemed to forego the uh, conventional on-your-toes sort of bobbing and weaving for a more flat-footed and laborious lumber-the-punch type approach. Sometimes some of these Eastern European fighters are a little bit upright. It's quite well scored. Yeah, the blood's starting to uh, trickle out some more here in the third round. Face of Shalva. Referee just tells Macklin to keep the punches up. <laughs> Tough round that for Shalva. A better one for Macklin. fight yet this evening that's gone the distance if we might see this one going into the later rounds yep this is the fourth round coming up and um, how's it looking so far in your books Ian I've got Macklin well ahead he's um, well Shalva's it's put up a decent effort but to me he's just uh, a little bit Class or two below Macklin. Yeah, he stepped in on only two weeks' notice, and although he has a decent oh, record, probably wasn't prime for a, a fight of this caliber had it not been for the uh, the injury of Barkin. Mark and here comes Macklin. Good counter puncher going on. A little cat and mouse right in the center of the ring. Yeah, it's lost. It's like lost its sense of urgency, hasn't it? Yeah, not That's just fine. inside the ring, but outside yeah, as well. Absolutely. Must be very hard for Macklin, having built himself up for a, a really big fight this evening against Darren Barker. I know that he's fighting against the substitute. He's in a, a real no-win situation. Expected to beat him quite comfortably. And it's only in this sport, too, of boxing, right? You don't find any other sports where there's uh, last-minute pullouts. Absolutely not, no. I mean, even in the, in the other individual sports, tennis, golf, you know who you're going to be competing against, and that rarely, if ever, changes. I guess that's a difference between those other individual sports and the highly contacted sport of boxing where injuries just happen all the time. Better around this for Shalva. Good uppercut though from Macklin. Ripping right hand to the body by Macklin. Shalva looks as if he's made to Take those all day long, though. There's another. Shalva misses with an overhand right. Both boxers seeming a little lethargic here in the fourth round. Not too much of a work rate, although Macklin seems to be trying to get his punches in. Has the air of almost a glorified spa, doesn't it, at the moment? Yeah, kind of does.
to the end of the fourth round. Macklin seemed to have found a home for that right hand in the left rib cage of Shava. And as you said, Shava looks built to, to withstand. However, how many rounds in a row can he eat those punches? We'll keep some good company tonight, Matt Macklin, if he wins his European title. Tekid Lewis. Sedan. Randolph Turpin, of course, he beat. Sugar Ray Robinson. Alan Minter went on to win a, a world title. Tony Simpson, a dangerous puncher. Harold Graham, another man who could pack a punch or two. Harold Eastman, who fought Bernard Hopkins. Beast from the East. Guyanese. So here we go, round five. There's that sledgehammer of a right again, and at this point, I don't even think Shalva's feeling him. Continues to move forward on Macklin. And there's a nice overhand right. Finally connects, and you hear it from. That was an ooh from the crowd. Yeah. Shalva's got a bit about him. Just not quite enough, I don't think, to upset Macklin here this evening. Yeah, he seems content to, instead of trying to win, he just seems content to not lose. and. You know, that's not going to garner much with the fans. There's a nice right hand by Chalva. A couple of good punches in this round. Well, Chalva's the one throwing right to the body. Both of the guys committed to boxing to the body, and there's a low blow almost by Chalva. Got to keep those hands up. Well, Georgian's just warmed to his task in this round. Back comes Macklin with a left hand. Suddenly the crowd are awake. This fight's just sprung into life here. Certainly the sense of urgency with the blood coming out of Shava's nose. Still. Absolutely. Just, the whole arena had gone to sleep. We'd almost gone to sleep on commentary, but suddenly now in this fifth round, we have a fight in our hands. Macklin perhaps stung by after being caught by a couple of shots. A lot of infighting going on there. The wrestling the referee is going to break him up. He wants to see some clean boxing. Advising Salvo to keep his hands up. And now the Macklin's hearing it from the crowd. They are alive and well here in Birmingham. Yeah, they're back. Thought the Salvo looked a little bit tired as he on that first break there. Not that one. The one before. It's a bit weary. Some of those punches from Macklin taking effect. Shava looked like he's breathing a little heavy also. Yeah, doesn't fancy it too much at the moment. Again, the crowd are behind Macklin. Macklin ripping the body shots. You he's gotta got love it. Shava hurt and in trouble hit. In the corner, back comes the Georgian. With a left hand. Macklin looking dangerous for the first time in the fight. Down goes Shava in a a From twisting a, fall. A slip and it. They give him nine out of ten for the backflip that followed. <laughs> we'll give him some extra points for that. However, I think he still loses the round. He looked a tired man, didn't he, when he went back to the corner? Yeah, I mean, and uh, you know, he's uh, still cut. That nose, it looks like, is bleeding, and they're going to do some work on that in the corner and try and put a stop to that, coagulate it if they can. We have four rounds where not a lot really happened. Macklin took control, but that fifth was easily the best of the fight. The crowd really got into it as well. And here we can see why. Oh, 
Chalvro looked at a very tired man when he went back to his corner. And has the minute rest. And that's it. It oh, looks it's all like over. Has his corner called it? It is all over. Matthew Macklin wins the European middleweight title. Oh, he said. Chalvro looked as if he could stand there all night soaking up the punches. Now yeah, one torrid round and decided he'd seen enough. That was one of the strangest stoppages. I mean, he certainly wasn't getting beat. He may have been losing on points, but I mean, this is the chosen profession. He's a he chose to be a professional boxer. I'm not sure how bad he wants it. And taken a few shots from Macklin, but nothing. It looks as if it had really, really hurt him. Maybe there's an injury, a hand injury perhaps, or a, a broken rib, maybe. He just quit. Well, it is a tough sport, and sometimes fights like this make you question how bad you really want to do it. Macklin's got his false teeth in now. So he looks good for the cameras. It's a quick check by the ringside doctor. Another bout that fails to go the distance here tonight, Ian. It seems like it's been a, uh, a great job of matchmaking here tonight, as all the bouts have been thoroughly entertaining. Yeah, we've had, well, we had that one round stoppage from James DeGale. That was just a, an impressive performance rather than a, a real mismatch in every other fight. I think pretty good. Yep, Nathan cleverly really. Uh, further increased his fan, fan base and looking to make that name on the international stage. Kel Brook looked good as well. The fight against Michael Jennings didn't really get going, but Brook got home on a, a cuts win. Yep, and uh, we saw Derek Chisora repeat history with a brilliant stoppage of Sam Sexton. And that real war between uh, McInerney and Franco, well, a, a war in the, in the final round. Worrying signs for McInerney, but back to this one. A good win for Matthew Macklin, who regains the European title. His sights will be set on bigger things. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Round of number six. The retires in his corner. Unable to continue. He is the winner. He is now the European middleweight champion, Matthew